Last week I attended um, the Advanced Mediator Training at AFLAM. I've also been doing some research because I have a book in the pipeline on um, what annoys people about mediators, what do they find most challenging about mediators. And there are some things that have um, come up over and over again that I thought I'd share with you um, and how mediators can actually um, think about it and possibly do things differently. So some of the complaints that uh, I've received and that also came to light in my advanced uh, mediator training was um, if a mediator is lazy, they're not committed, they show up on the day, they're going to get paid regardless of the outcome and they just really bowl their arm over. Lawyers and participants do, um, do see that and it's not, uh, it's not adding value to the mediation. Another complaint is that mediators that give up too soon and there may be an impasse and instead of trying to work through the impasse and trying to work with the lawyers and the clients, they um, fold the mediation and, um, and just move on. Or they only act as what I consider as like a carrier pigeon, so they just, they just pass off offers between, um, between the participants in, uh, located in different offices. Um, or they allow parties to vent and uh, focus on emotions too much and then there's no, that can really derail the process and then also not allow, not allow enough time for um, discussion on options and uh, resolution. Also a mediator that doesn't have the skills to reality test in a way that maintains their neutrality and impartiality. And a big complaint was that uh, participants don't like mediators that don't get involved, that have a hands-off approach and um, they just don't add any value by helping people to negotiate. I'm gonna do another video later on in relation to how uh, mediators can add value at mediation. But first of all, I'm going to discuss how that uh, mediators can add value by firstly holding a pre-mediation. Why is it so important for a mediator to meet with clients and lawyers prior to mediation? I say between seven to 10 days prior. Well, because it's an opportunity to build trust and to establish rapport between clients and their lawyers um, by hearing about their respective experiences, how they see themselves and also see their cases. I meet with clients um, preferably face to face. Um, lawyers are always welcome and invited. If they don't come, well then I um, will speak with them via a teleconference. A pre-mediation also helps to stabilise emotions um, and that's done by a mediator really listening, at listening attentively to the clients and asking the right questions in a curious manner to, try, to really try to understand um, what the client's experience is and the emotions associated with that. We may never understand because we're looking through it um, through their experiences through our own lens and we've got to all got our own lens of experiences and so forth but it's about trying to understand the emotions underlying their experience and that is really empathic listening and we also help people to get uh, especially clients get um, comfortable with meeting the person on the other side of the table usually they're the person they're in dispute with and we I try to work with clients on their opening statements so that it doesn't um, land a bomb to begin with and put the mediation process on a negative, um, unhelpful um, platform, but try to help them to be able to express what they need to say to be able to get the mediation on the right footing. I also discuss the legal and the human issues with, um, with lawyers so that I can understand where they're coming from as well. Pre-mediation, often it's done in family law, not often is it done in common law. But um, I think it's really important that these, um, these conferences or these face-to-face -face, um, uh, meetings that take place so that the mediation can be set up um, with a greater opportunity for success. I'll speak next time about how mediators can add value at the actual mediation. I do, uh, I'm a non-court based dispute resolution expert in family law. So I'm a mediator, 
collaborative coach and an arbitrator and I also um, am a mediator in common law and accept briefs in medical negligence and institutional abuse cases. Thank you.